but living a pure life of service, service to God, compassion to others. Hearing the glories of the Lord and chanting the names of the Lord cleans the heart. Cleanses the heart till it is transparent in our, love, our, our, our natural love of God and universal love for all that is connected to God becomes a natural, a natural illumination in our lives and in the world. Is there any other questions? Yes, Prabhu. You are Prabhu. Do you want the long explanation or the short explanation? <laughs> what is the question? Can you say the question very loudly so this virtuous lady can hear? <laughs> what is your name, virtuous lady? Shakuntala. <laughs> Shakuntala? Yes. I asked if he could share the pastime of how he came to Krishna consciousness and to the Prabhupada. The long version takes a few days. <laughs> the short one is by Prabhupada's mercy. <laughs> search. And I was a teenager at the time. This was in the 1960s. So I was thinking that if I don't know what is the purpose of life, then what real meaning is there to living? So I consider this is a first priority. One thing I did is I felt culturally isolated. That I was very much programmed to see things according to the environment around me. How I was conditioned to see. So I wanted to go to other cultures to see how other people see reality. To see how other people view the world and the purpose of life. So I began to travel around America and into other countries. And the underlying desire was to understand what is spiritual reality. So I was kind of like in a spiritual sociological expedition and traveled to various places. And this is where I have to fast forward. <laughs> when we were in Europe, traveling to various places, and I was reading many books on theology, philosophy, religion, history. And my conclusions were more and more and more that I that, that spiritual enlightenment 
is the only real truth. And I must understand what is what is it within me that is eternal, that is real. What is God? So in um, Europe as well as in America, I was making a study of the various religions of the world. in Europe, especially Christianity and Judaism. I was going to monasteries, cathedrals, and synagogues, and talking to holy, holy people, learned people, seeing how people were living, and also just seeing how people were living, and you know, what their values were. Then I went to the Middle East, and studied Islam. I hitchhiked. Wherever I went, I hitchhiked. Because I considered that if I if I went by paid transportation, I wouldn't learn properly. <laughs> <laughs> but when you're hitchhiking, you have to depend on a higher power, <laughs> not on your money, <laughs> to get you where you want to go. So I actually hitchhiked from London to Delhi. <laughs> Quite exciting. <laughs> I was on Greek island meditating, and then from there I went to Turkey. You are from Turkey? I hitchhiked across your whole country. <laughs> First, I went from Thessalonica. I'm sorry? Thessalonica in Greece. Oh. And I went across the border. And it was very dangerous. Greece <laughs> and Turkey were not friendly people in those days, as far as each other. Right. And in fact, when I was there, the largest cholera epidemic in the whole century was in Turkey. This was in 1970. It was a no man's land between Greece and Turkey. But that's a long story. So I hitchhiked from Istanbul to Ankara to Erzurum. To Erzurum? Erzurum. Okay, how do you say it? Erzurum. Erzurum, yes. <laughs> Have you been there? No. It's in eastern part. It's a very, it's, it's a very exciting place, actually. <laughs> From Eastern Turkey, I entered into Iran. Um, I don't remember all the cities, but Tehran, and then to Mash Mashhad. Mashhad is holy place. I was there for Ramadan. I practiced Ramadan in Mashhad. It's one of the very holy cities of Islam in Iran. And then from Iran, I entered into a place that has become quite famous. <laughs> Afghanistan. <laughs> First I lived in Herat. Actually in those days Afghanistan was a very wonderful country. The people of Afghanistan were some of the friendliest, simplest people in the whole world. They were so kind. They let me stay in the house and they'd give me that flat bread. <coughs> <laughs> so from Herat, went to Kandahar. Kandahar is, later on became the capital of the Taliban's, yes? And then to Kabul. I was there studying Islam, going to mosques, masjids, and meeting people, and living with the people. Then from Afghanistan, I went to the Khyber Pass. Pretty well. <laughs> Khyber Pass, I didn't hitchhike. <laughs> Nobody has ever hitchhiked alive through the Khyber Pass. I somehow or other did some fundraising in um, Kabul and got a bus ticket across. 